With the first six trading companies done and dusted, it's time to move on to the hunter's call. This one is a bit briefer like the sea dogs, but has possibly the most interesting beginning so far. And that's because of my man Merrick. The hunter's call story begins with Merrick. During the first year of the events of Sea of Thieves and coinciding with the Hungering Deep, a strange camp showed up on Shark Bait Cove. At that camp was a mysterious character called Merrick. Merrick was the victim of a horrendous shark attack from an ancient beast. Or really, he was a victim of his own stupidity. Merrick and the crew of the killer whale managed to summon the Hungering One through complete chance. See, Merrick had learned a shanty through a painting left behind by the ancients and would often strike up a tune while sailing. However, one fateful day when he was playing this shanty, another crew joined in. The pirates unwillingly summoned the Megalodon. Within a flash, the crew had been devoured and Merrick lost his arm and his legs. Losing both the killer whale and his crew, Merrick fell into a constant drunken stupor in an effort to dull the pain. Merrick would try various ways to get his revenge on the hungering one, even using animals stolen from the Merchant Alliance as chum for the waters. He would eventually learn that he could not call the beast alone. Merrick believed if enough pirates could learn the shanty, he could avenge his crew, although he decided this to be too dangerous. Merrick decided to retire to Sharkbait Cove with plenty of grog, making drums in case someone would want to prove their worth. To Merrick's delight, many crews showed up to assist in his revenge tale. Despite Merrick being retired, several unnamed crews discovered his past and learned the shanty, resulting in the death of the Hungering One. Merrick, now retired and avenged, decided to sober up and make something of his life. And as part of that newfound strength, he chose to come out of retirement and track down his family. Merrick found his wife Sarek and brother Hendrik, with their combined love for fishing, hunting and cooking, they formed the Hunter's Call around a year after the events of Sea of Thieves begin. As the family was self-sufficient, they chose to live on the various sea posts around the Sea of Thieves, which was set up around six months after the game begins during the events of Forsaken Shores. The Hunter's Call would remain steadfast for several years, keeping to themselves during most of the major events in the four years following them being founded. Merrick would actively leave his post to assist in the hunting of the Shrouded Ghost and the Battle of Golden Sands, until he was killed by the Dark Brethren. To fill his place, nearly a year later, Adelric moved to Stephen Spoils to bring the Hunter's Call back up to full strength. The Hunter's Call also made a deal with the Sovereigns around this time. The Sovereigns would now deliver fish on behalf of pirates, but the Hunter's Call would increase their prices if players delivered food to them directly. Serik is the first key individual that we'll cover. While Merrick has so much more story to talk about, he'll be getting his own episode but the NPCs for the Hunter's Call have possibly the most interesting personalities. Serik is Merrick's wife and agreed to set up the Hunter's Call after observing the other trading companies thrive in the Sea of Thieves. She knew pirates would be tired of digging up chests and hunting skeletons, so she decided she wanted to pass on her skills as well as make a profit for selling the food on that pirates delivered. Serik also reveals that Merrick's obsession with the Megalodon caused a rough patch between them. Serik swam off with a merman to spite Merrick, but would ultimately give him a second chance when the Hungering One was vanquished. At the end of the Hunter's Cry, when Merrick decides to receive the blessing of Athena's fortune, he tasks the player crew to deliver a letter to Serik, this letter being his final farewell to her. Hendrik is Merrick's brother, and is an accomplished chef. He has big plans for the Sea of Thieves, with a dining hall at every outpost and a sail through galley at every sea post. Hendrik lives at the Spoils of Plenty store. Derek is Merrick's long lost son. He is found at the finest trading post. A picture of the two can be found at Shark Bay Cove. Derek found him shortly after the Hungering Deep. This was actually a nod to a player called Dr. Nefarious, a user who made their pirate look like Merrick. So Rare immortalized them and wove it into the lore. Derek has actually received his tattoo from Merrick, where he used Kraken ink and a rusty cutlass to stencil the art onto Derek. Anik is Merrick's daughter, found at three paces east sea post. Anik has a problem with eating normal food and therefore prefers to eat bait. She's tried eating Kraken meat and pineapples, yet both of these made her extremely nauseous. As Anik loves bait so much, she never even learns to fish with it. Zarek is next and is Merrick's sister, located at Brian's Bazaar, also being the ex-wife of Emmerich. Zarek doesn't really care for the Hunter's Call, particularly the cooking of food and fishing. She eventually left Emmerich after his conspiracy theories became too much for her to handle. Emmerich, or as he prefers, Jack, lives at the Wild Treasures store. 
Emmerich loves conspiracy theories, with his latest being that Jonah is a skeleton lord. Seriously. He believes Jonah turned Zarek against him. He also believes that a giant winged creature lives in the sea, and he saw it set fire to a fleet of ships. Aethric resides at Roaring Traders and is Zarek's sister. Aethric hates Merrick and sees him as a fool. She has over 30 years of experience and managed to catch a legendary moon wrecker, where she waited at the wreck of the shameful Howl for three weeks. Aethric then cooked him for her supper. Finally, we have Adelric, the most recent addition to the Hunter's Call. He's most likely the son of Zarek and Emmerich, as he calls Merrick and Aethric uncle and auntie respectively. As Adelric is new, he's still nervous in his demeanour with some big shoes to fill. Emmerich likely calls himself Jack, possibly because that was his original name but changed it when he married into the family. Zarek has coral in her hair to symbolise her eloping with the merman. The killer whale is a nod to the orca, the ship featured in the 1975 film Jaws. Just like the orca was used to hunt a man-eating shark, the killer whale would also be used to hunt a man-eating shark. The shooting star in the Shrouded Deep trailer is also a nod to the shooting star in the film. The wreck of the killer whale can be found at the Reaper's hideout, however this was confirmed to be used in the construction of the hideout, but somehow remains in between the two islands. And that wraps up the Hunter's Call, I hope you enjoyed yet another episode. Next time we'll be covering the rise of the Reaper's Bones in possibly our longest and best episode yet. That episode will be truly special, so make sure you subscribe for that. Don't forget to like if you haven't already, thanks again for watching, and as always, I'll see you in the next video.